Hi there, ladies and gentlemen. It's me, Dr. Donna. Time for week 2752. Mm -hmm. Last week, I read the five temptations of a CEO. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, this fable was really, really, really good, very informative, and it was short. It was an easy read. I really was impressed with this book. Certainly, without further ado, check out the five temptations that I have and the author has for you. Temptation number one, choosing status over results. There are a lot of CEOs who are ego-based and all they care about is how they look and how the company is going to help them grow in their own professional development. That's so terrible because the company loses and everybody that works for the organization, the shareholders, the board members, the people that consume the products and services all lose when a CEO is only focused on themselves and their status. Choose results instead of your status. Temptation number two, choosing popularity over accountability. Let me tell you something. The only people who care about being popular are celebrities and high school students. Everybody else, every great leader is more focused on accountability. You have to hold yourself and your direct reports accountable. I talk about this in 60 Second Strategies and I also address this in my book accountability. Without it, we are reckless. Temptation number three, choosing certainty over clarity. Getting a bunch of data. I mean a bunch of data. A bunch, a bunch, a bunch of data. And the next thing you know, your desk and your cloud is filled with all this data and you can't even make a decision. You have to be able to make a decision and then make adjustments. And as all great quarterbacks do, they call audibles in the huddle. That's what you need to do. You can't have enough data. You'll never have all the information. You gotta start making decisions and address it and change it along the way. Temptation number four, choosing harmony over productive conflict. Yeah, nobody likes conflict. I talk about this in my book as well. No one ever wants to address conflict, but conflict is like a match in the beginning. And if you don't address it and you don't allow people to voice their opinions, it's going to turn into a forest fire. Anger means things need to change. So listen to those angry voices and then strategize to make the situation and the company run better. Finally, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, temptation number five, choosing invulnerability over trust. You're so strong, you're the leader of the organization. Of course you're not human. Of course you don't have any emotions. You don't have any feelings. Why would you demonstrate that? Everyone will think you're weak. Do you know that Winston Churchill during the Blitz went down to all of the buildings and all of the rubble and he cried with the people and he showed them his human side because he wanted them to know we are not going to let this evil person take us over. It was very difficult, but the people loved him for his ability to show that he was human and they trusted him. So trust is always going to outweigh anything else. Ladies and gentlemen, this week's book is Freakonomics. I was extremely excited when I picked the book up. I can't wait to see all of the yummy, yummy, yummy golden nuggets that are inside of it. I'm really looking forward to this book. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, I would recommend The Five Temptations of a CEO. It is actually a very good fable. If you are a CEO of an organization or you're planning to be a CEO, get the book, check it out, read it, refer to it often. That's all that I have for you for this week. Before I get out of here, just remember, if it's possible for me, then it's possible for you. Watch what we do in 52. I'll see you guys next week. Adios.